Hello and welcome to the PHP Object Oriented Programming Crash Course. This is what we are going to build at the end of the course. Uh, this simple page where we showcase a few products and each product has a title, a, an image, a description and a price and we can sort the products and move between the bicycle products and the website products and that's pretty much it uh, we can not do much at the moment we can implement more features at the end of the course uh, where for instance we can click on the product image and see each product or maybe show how many products we have for e for each uh, of these items and then a total value we will see at the end of the course uh, okay the first thing I am going to do now is to open um, Visual Studio Code and uh, I am in a new folder I have called it object oriented programming course OOP course and the first thing I'm gonna do is create an entry point uh, you can do that either by using the um, user interface of Visual Studio Code or, or mm, let me clear the, the screen or uh, using the command line let's start by using the command line then we will use the user interface later okay so the first thing is to touch an index.php file that command will create a new file and you see it's going to appear over here on the left sidebar and then we can create two folders um, uh, we use the mkdir command and then we can say classes and then we make another folder for the views and uh, that's it then let's create two files I am going to use the common the user interface and I'm going to call this class dot product PHP this is the first class that I am going to build and then the second file that we are going to create is the view so we can call this index the view dot PHP okay next what we want to do is, e is open the PHP tag and require our class file so we use the dot at the beginning to, to say this is the current folder and then classes and then we select the product class there is only a product in here okay okay now that we have the product inside the index file this is just an entry point we can import using the include statement we can import a view we don't need the parentheses and then current folder views and then the index.php file that this is empty for now we will put stuff inside later okay all the code that we are going to write will be here and then we will have a class here okay let's start by uh, making our first class first thing first uh, I will cover the basics of the object oriented programming in PHP here in this course uh, we'll try to use real world examples so no full bars no var uh, no value 1 value 2 or class A class B uh, because I realized that this uh, doesn't often make much sense for beginners 
So um, I will start by covering how to use doc blocks uh, to document our code, declare a class using the class keyword, declare an access properties including private and protected properties, and how to use the constructor the constructor method uh, and how to instantiate an object uh, with new keyword and how to write class methods and subclasses and some extra at the end of the course where we will build that small mm, project that you saw at the beginning so um, let's get started with the doc, doc blocks uh, we have already in place a basic um, project folder structure so the doc blocks are used by programmers to document their code and make it easy to understand by other developers. Uh, doc blocks are uh, interpreted by text editors like this one that I'm using, Visual Studio Code, uh, and they provide a set of information about each bit of code. Uh, a doc block is defined using the following syntax. And let's first open the PHP tag and this is how we define a doc block and so it's two asterisks at the beginning before uh, after a slash and then uh, an asterisk at the end and a slash so on each new line there is new asterisk and then we can uh, start by describing what inside this file so this is a product class so I'm going to say product class then we can use uh, different types of annotation the first that I'm going to use the author annotation which uh, it does what it says so the author is Fabio and you put your name and then we can use another uh, dot annotation. You can uh, use the copyright. And there are more. Okay, the syntax for the copyright is the year first, so 2010, and then the name of the copyright holder. And uh, we could use the license, uh, but I'm not going to use it. And then we start by defining our class. There are more uh, annotations you can read um, a bit more inside the post that I wrote on my blog uh, that I will put a link in um, the description. So let's start by using the class keyword to, be, to define our, cl our class. The class is basically a... The, a it's like a plan for uh, building a uh, different kind of object uh, that share the same characteristics so it's um, like a blueprint that we can use to create multiple objects uh, we'll, and each class is like for instance a uh, two-dimensional drawing that we for instance use to build something like for example when you uh, if you want to produce a bicycle you are going to need a plan and this drawing will show how to make each part of the bicycle and the frame size the wheel the wheels and the bars and all the different parts that make up a bicycle and we can use the same a project to um, create lots of bikes and each bikes can be uh, different from the other maybe we can change color uh, or uh, the frame size or the wheel size and so on so uh, let's start by um, defining this class using the class keyword so this is how we define the class when we create a class we start by using it by typing a class name and with a capital letter so this is the product class and I would say product uh, I'm going to get rid of this part we don't need that 
now and this is the class and let's see what it does let's go back inside our index.php file in the root pro in the root of our project folder and then uh, let's create a new object uh, so we use the class to define the um, structure of our object and then we instantiate a new object uh, which means we create a new object so an object can be anything with a name for instance if you are building a blog you have a post you have comments you have a user and all these are uh, objects in this case we have a product so uh, we can create a new product object mm, and this is how we define the pro the object so uh, we have instantiated the new object and then we save that inside the new variable for instance this, and that's it now let's output to the terminal our new object so this is how we are put that into the console now you can uh, execute an index a php file by using php minus f option and then you put the file name in this case is the index.php file and what we are going to get is the object uh, that we have just created and with product object and it is empty we have zero properties so there is nothing inside uh, because we did not define anything for this object now the next step is to simply add some information so we can structure our object uh, in, uh, in properly so like when you build a bicycle or if you, have, if you are building uh, something else you need to define some properties uh, properties can be public and they are available from anywhere either inside or outside our class definition they are declared using the public keyword but they could also there could also be protected and private properties and protected properties are only accessible within our class or the subclass and they are uh, defined using the protected keyword while pr private properties are only available within our class and we declare them using the private keyword um, so let's declare some properties for our object I've got some of them uh, written already so where it is okay so inside our curly brackets we define our first uh, properties for this object so what I've done is um, first uh, using the block annotation here and I have um, described what's going to follow which is uh, some variable for the class and I am using the var annotation uh, and then the type of the variable that I'm using here which in this case for the name is a string and then the name of the variable in this case the name and then the description of what this variable is uh, which is the product name same thing for the other two um, variables and then I have attached to each I have simply say I have simply uh, attached to each variable a value and this is how uh, you assign a value to a variable in PHP and you define a variable inside a as I said inside the class using the public keyword in this case these variables are all public so they are available from outside and from the inside of the class or from a subclass so let's see what we get now that we have this class and its properties available to us let's var dump again the object and see what's going to happen now as you see we have again our object uh, which is a product class and we have three uh, properties inside the name we have the description 
we have the price, the name is a string with eight characters and uh, echo desk and then the description, ergonomic tasks for developers and the price uh, which is an integer 120 quid so uh, let's move forward to uh, because our properties are all public we can now access the name uh, of our new object in this way and what we are going to get is just the name of the object that we defined and so the echo desk same thing is true for the description and for the price okay now logically this uh, class as it is is not really useful our object is always the same if we define another object and we uh, output that uh, to the console inside our terminal we just execute the file again sorry let me write down both the first uh, first object so we now are going to output two different objects but if you check the output the objects are identical and this is not what we want because as I said the class is blueprint for uh, mm, creating multiple objects uh, with same characteristics but could be different uh, details for each one so uh, in this case I might want to have a let's close that we don't need so in this case I might want to have a desk with a different name uh, different description different price so what we need is the first to see is the first magic method of PHP which is the construct method let's get rid of these values here and just declare these three properties now the constructor method is a special function that is uh, run every time our class is instantiated it's helpful to define properties for our class that we want to define when a new object is instantiated and we use the doc blocks here uh, with the param annotation and that is useful to provide additional information every time we need to instantiate an object so uh, let's get started with that and I'm going to copy that so I don't have to type and you don't have to watch me typing and that's how we define a construct method um, every function uh, can be in the same way it can be a property can have a uh, public protected or um, private keyword in front of it and then the function keyword and then in this case this is a special method of construct where we pass three parameters the name the description and the price and we describe that inside our uh, doc block using the param annotation and then we follow with the type of the parameter that we want and then the um, parameter itself and its description and inside the um, function uh, the function inside a class is called method so I am going to call it method from now on uh, so this method now uh, what it's going to do we are using this, this keyword this in this case refers to the object itself so we are saying that this object name using the arrow syntax here is equal to the name property of the object and what is that is going to do will be clear in a second when we create our first object again using these properties that we can we have defined here and let's save that and go back inside our index file and let's see now the difference when we are going to 
uh, is initiated a new object we will see that this object now has uh, the description of the class this is appears when you over it over on it and then you have the author the copyright this is what the doc block does and then we have the details about the parameters that we can pass when we create a new object so we need first to define a string parameter so inside that you see is highlighted in red because there is a problem here we need to define that otherwise that won't work so let's start by defining our first um, product so let's say i want to name it ergonomic test and then um, you see it's red again because we need a second parameter to pass inside that and every time you move forward so after a um, uh, one of the parameter you put a comma and then this appears telling you you need the description now you need to insert the description so let's do that so the description is going to be for instance this and now we need another parameter which is the price and let's say 129.9 integers like float numbers does not or uh, booleans do not need to be surrounded by equals so this is our new object now you will see that is this is going to make much more sense because now we can execute the file and we see that we have an object with a description okay we have exactly one object uh, with a name ergonomic desk the description and the price in the same way we define here now let's define also the second object and this is the magic that the construct method applies so we define new product and then here we can uh, specify different options different parameters for our product so this is going to be different product so say simple desk and the desk is for instance we need a description so this is going to be a simple desk for students and then it's comfortable desk for students and its price is 99 pound and now we bar dump both object and we check inside our terminal window and we now have two different object objects object one is a product class and has three properties name description and price and we have another object with a different name a different description and a different price so now that we have uh, the basic structure i'll show you how we can define uh, we can assign a default parameter to a value the default value to a parameter and that is uh, easy to do because the only thing that we need to do is come here inside our construct method and let's say we want a color uh, parameter and then we say equals to a um, let's say white so now every time we instantiate a new object the object will have a default color uh, which is in this case white so we do the inside our constructor we add this line of code and then we go back inside our um, entry point and then we can check again our object and we will have another parameter here another property here available which is the color and it's set to white because if we say the, the, there is a default value for this property and the magic here is that we can change that as we need and say for instance this desk is black and this desk is fine with the default so 
now the first object has a black color and the other one is still white this is how we define a property with a default value value okay now let's move to the methods inside of a class as i said earlier a function is called method so let's start by defining a method inside our class let's say that we want to change our uh, product name after we have instantiated this class how could we do that well one thing we can do is replace the name here and say black if we want to add color as well and this is going on of course this is going to work of course but this is not the proper way to do that because we are going to change the uh, instantiation of, a of the object itself instead of changing the value let's imagine that the you are um, building an e-commerce store and you want products and then your um, the user defines uh, creates few products and then he wants to change the description and for that what we need is a method so let's say that we need a new method so let's create a function and we call that set name and then what we need to pass inside this method is the actual name that property that we want name ah, name that we want to replace and inside here inside here what we need to do is simply say this name is equal to name and then so we use this keyword to say this object name is equal to the name and then we return the name so this function actually does return the name property that we pass to it when we call this method I'll show you what it means in a second let's now add the dark block to this okay so mm, describing what this method does its parameter and what it returns now uh, method as you see in the same way that properties were works in the same property for um, properties uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> also for methods we have uh, this um, fuck. like properties and methods can be public protected and private method can also be static inside the method we use this keyword that refers to the object itself so this is what's going to happen what's happening here now uh, public methods are available from anywhere either inside or outside the class definition and they are declared using the public keyword like in this example uh, but they can also be protected private and static and obviously this keyword will change and also their availability and uh, we will see that later on in the course so we start by using this public method and we define a method that we can use to change the, the name of the product that we defined so let's use it so now let's say that I want the e-desk to set its name to 
fabulous. Let's see now what we get. And indeed, our first object now has a different name that we set using our newly grading function and it's fabulous desk let's move forward and let's see what we what else we need to do So we set the name and now we can move forward in this way. Okay, we let's define a few more methods inside our product class and they will be useful later on to help us uh, understand better uh, our subclasses and visibility work. let's go back inside our function i am i am going to copy some of the methods so you don't have to watch me typing so we have a set name let's define a, a set price if because of course in the same way we want to change the name we might want to change the price and then we can have another method let's copy this um, another method to set the description um, Now we can set the, the name, the description, we can set the price and let's also create methods to get properties. Uh, of course we can, uh, as I said here, we if you want to get the, t the title of this, produ of this product, uh, only the title you say the name and then when you execute the file for the first object you only gonna get the uh, its name but when the mm, property is let's say it's protected it is not going to work because we are trying to access this property from outside the class so uh, it's not visible to us and we got a uh, cannot access property uh, protected property so it's PHP fatal error and to have access to that we need to create some methods let's see that in a minute okay let's create some methods that will help us to get the properties when they are defined as a, as a private so let's start by getting the name so here I'm going to get the name so as always we start with the dog block in this case we only return something uh, with this function we don't need to pass any parameter inside it because the only thing we want to do is grab the name of <coughs> our object and we use this keyword because we refer to this object and then we grab the name property and we return it directly uh, after the function is called let's do cover more objects uh, methods so 
we can have a get name we can have a get description and we can have a get price so we can set these properties as private um, but protected in this case will be returned or even private now let's create another function uh, that we can use to just play around we can use this function to um, calculate stock of our stock level and its value uh, so what we are going to do is calculate stock value and this uh, fun this method is going to accept the parameter and the parameter is going to be a, an integer and this is going to be named uh, let's say quantity so quantity and it's the stock okay and what we are going to return is is in float so we're going to return a float and the float is going to be a, um, the result of the calculation and the so and let's actually create this function and calc stock value and we pass the quantity and here we can do something like that we can create a, a variable so we can say calc calculation is equal to how do we calculate the stock value so we grab this object price and then we multiply that by its quantity that is the one that we pass to the function that's it then we return the calc return the calc variable and that's it okay we have get price get description get name and our class now has new functions uh, i mean methods so we have the set name set price set and get price get name get description and the calc stock value and now uh, before um, diving into the properties and methods disability we we can use we can define um, a subclass and see how inheritance between classes works so what is a subclass a subclass is essentially a class that depends from another it inherits all these um, properties and methods that we defined inside our product class and because it extends this class um, let's see how we can do that so let's create a new file inside our classes uh, folder and we call it bicycles and that's it okay let's add some block no uh, doc notes okay and how do we define a class we say do we define we define this class in this way this time is a bicycle class and the bicycle class actually extends a product product class doesn't implement an interface for now and we are good to go now as I say the class can inherit properties and methods from its parent class but also can override them by declaring 
parent properties of methods and can have different um, properties and methods uh, that are specific to this class and only this class can use them for instance we have a product but the bicycle is a different product uh, from a desk and the bicycle can have different properties for instance can have a frame size and a wheel size let's get started with that okay we have the talk block we say bicycle class variable and we define that then what else do we need to do so as I said before moving to the construct method we can have a look at what happens when we create a new object using the bicycle class so now we have a bicycle class and we can create a bicycle so as you see our blueprint let us uh, create different objects using the same model uh, okay so let's say we have a e-bike and then you create the bicycle we have access to the properties defined inside the parent construct uh, so we can now define a name description the price and the color for this bicycle so let's start by doing that um, so let's call it that is my bike we call it benzoton and say uh, electric for developers and uh, we say what, what is the price let's say 800 pound and the color is white but we can change it as you say it is blue and here we go we have now another object and then let's well, let's dump that to the console okay and see what we got we have a php fatal error class bicycle not found inside our index file the error is in line 12 so this is not found because of course we need to import that at the top oops in the same way we imported our master class so we can import uh, the subclass so by saying all right now that is going to work and here we go we have our new bicycle object which has six properties and the first two properties are null because we did not define them so the frame size and the wheel size are null but we have access to the other and let's move uh, back to our class our bicycle class and let's see how we can define these two properties as we said we need the construct method also here and oops next we need uh, to define this frame size and the wheel size okay that's it the frame oh. okay in the same way we we normally do that and we can on these two okay but now as I said uh, we are extending a parent class so what we need to do here is extend our parent constructor so how do we do that we simply re uh, declare the 
three main properties for the construct method uh, for the final construct method we did declare them inside our uh, subclass and we include the color as well uh, we are ready to go now since we uh, we are extending a parent constructor we can use a method called parent construct and it is done like that parent construct and inside here we pass the property name the property description and the property price and the color so we are extending the parent constructor so we now have access to all of that properties uh, when we create our new object we simply need to pass them to our uh, to our object so if we over to it we see the particle class that extend the product class and then we see that we can use all these parameters to define our object so we have the title we have the description we have the price we have the color now we can add the um, frame size let's say 21.5 inches and then um, what else I say the wheel so uh, 26 wheels uh, 26 inch wheels and now we can see that we have our new object with new properties available and indeed we have frame size we have the wheel size and then the standard product uh, properties which which means they are the name the descriptions the price and the color so this is how we create a child class if we want so we extend the parent class using the construct method and we can uh, call from this class any uh, method that we defined previously so if we want to uh, calculate um, uh, for, for instance the stock value so um, let's calculate the stock value for the uh, e-bicycle e object uh, we say how many bicycle we want to calculate the value for let's say we have 80 bicycle and let's see what is the result of this now we have 64,000 pound of stock value when we have 80 bicycle of this uh, type and this price okay so our model works fine and what we've done is as always we start by opening a, a PHP tag at the top like that and then we use the doc blocks to define and document our class and declare um, the class using the class keyword and then we use the extend keyword to say that we extend this class extends another class so from here we have access to all the properties and methods that we defined in the product class therefore we extend e, uh, because we use the extend keyword uh, inside our new class we can declare new properties and methods so if we want to define another method here we can do so and we can also override the parent um, method and properties by simply redeclaring them then inside our construct method we have uh, of our new class we pass uh, to it the parameters defined inside our parent class and a couple of more parameters which is this two childish two and then inside the construct method we use the parent uh, double column construct method uh, right at the beginning of our function so in this way we can inherit the properties declared there in the parent constructor 
and after that we follow with the usual syntax and we uh, declare these two properties inside our constructor so our bicycle class now has access to the name the description the price the color and the property these properties and the name uh, the set price the get price get name stock values etc etc all these methods that we defined inside our parent class we can now uh, use them if we want if we can modify them by declaring uh, properties and methods and we are free to do whatever we want so let's move forward and uh, to the next topic which is the property visibility